I've heard the saying, travel brings success. And I didn't realize that that is also a part of our Bible. Travel brings success. You know, Jesus and his ministry on the earth, he traveled. You know, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Then his family left for Egypt. He was raised in Nazareth. And the first miracle that he did was in Cana, where he turned the water into wine. Then he visited a fishing village on the Sea of Galilee. And that's where he healed the blind man and he fed 5,000. He also visited De Decapolis, which is 10 cities, and they were Gentile cities. He was in Gadara, where he delivered the man with a legion of demons. He went to Tyre and Sidon, coast of the Mediterranean. He delivered a daughter that had an impure spirit there. He saw the deaf man here at his hands. Paralyzed people were healed at his hands. In name, he raised the dead. In Gethsemane, he prayed so hard because he knew what was coming in front of him that they that the Bible says his sweat was turned to blood. In Jericho, he met the tax collector, Zacchaeus, and he went to his home despite the religious leaders of the day thinking, oh, you're with these dirty tax collectors. And in Bethany, he raised Lazarus from the dead just 10 days before he himself would be crucified. As I was reading that scripture, I realized he wanted them to see that he was going to not only be crucified, but on the third day he was going to rise from the dead. And that's so unbelievable for anyone to comprehend that someone could come back to life, that he rose Lazarus from the dead in front of a great company of people. And remember, Mary and Martha called him to come. They said, Lazarus is, is dying. And Jesus did not come until after he died. And, and when he finally got there, Martha said, Lord, he stinks. He's been dead for four days. Even then, Jesus raised him from the dead. And it says that he came and ate with him. He was trying so hard to help them believe, like many times he does for, for us. He wants us to believe that he's not only able, but he's willing to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could even think or imagine. He can do it if we only but believe. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He wants us to believe in what we cannot see. Faith is the substance, substance, of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Can you imagine evidence of something you can't see? That's how faith works. You can't see the wind, but it's there and we need it to breathe. We cannot see our God, but we need him to live, to move, and to have our being. In Jerusalem, Jesus went into the temple and he was appalled that they had taken the spiritual things and turned it into money-making um, commodity by selling and exchanging uh, things needed for their rituals. And he overturned the tables. In anger, he overturned all the tables. You know, the Bible says you can be angry, but don't sin. He was angry, but he did not sin. In Golgotha, the place of the skull, it's, somewhere, it's near Jerusalem, is where he was crucified. And Pilate, the Roman leader of the day, 
placed a sign over Jesus that read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the day that did not want anything to do with this religious man that healed the sick and raised the dead and cast demons out of those who were possessed and healed the paralyzed man and and healed people of the palsy and and healed people of fevers they wanted nothing to do with him a lot of time religious leaders of the day you know what they want they want you to give money you know i'm a i am a pastor at a very small church in caroline county virginia And when they asked me to be pastor, I said, I'll be pastor, but I won't take money for that. I'm not in this for money, folks. I'm in this to share the gospel of Jesus Christ because until I had a relationship with God, I did not even know who I was. I was so influenced by what was around me, tradition, family upbringing but when I met this man Jesus and I realized that he was God himself who came in the flesh took on our sins died for us created every one of us with our own DNA that nobody else in the whole world has he made us with with um with all of our characteristics. My boldness came from God himself. The color of my hair, he chose it. The path that I'm walking on, he said, follow my path. And I found who I, who I am. I don't have to conform to those around me and what tradition says. I was born into his kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom and he is the king but the religious leaders of the day the Jewish religious leaders of the day that talked the Roman government into um, incarcerating and killing the king they told Pilate oh no they said we protest do not write king of the Jews write he claimed to be king of the Jews and in John 19 16 through 22 read it for yourself Pilate answered them and says what I have written I have written and you know what that means the king's heart is in God's hand let me just bring it home to you with all of the governments around us and how they are oppressing many nations including America and nations all over the world You know, they're trying to take over and control the people and they're using them in uh, everywhere, everywhere. I'm here to tell you, you don't have to worry. If you're born into God's kingdom, you step out of the rule of this world and people like the chief priest and the Roman rulers and you step into a kingdom that God is the king. And he will lead, protect, provide, and care for those in his kingdom. And the funny thing is, even if you're not in the kingdom of God, um, I know some people will say, Kelly, why are you telling this? He loves people so much that he does it anyway for most people. And I say most because some people have, the Bible says, have become... Um, reprobates and and that takes you out of his care completely I'm here in the Grand Bahama Island this week and I came here for our company to um, look at a potential project to build 20 houses on this beautiful island my partner business associate Dr. Khan But the night before I left, 
As I was saying my prayers, the song came to me and it says, I came on business for the king. And that old song came to my mind <clears throat> and I sang it all night. And I was like, oh, I'm going on a business trip. And God is telling me, it's not just a business trip to better the lives of those that live on the Grand Bahama Island, Kelly. You're on my business there. So the first morning I woke up here in Grand Bahama Island, the first thing that came to my mind is you're on business for the king. You know, sometimes our business that we go to, we get up, we work nine to five or whatever your hours are. You think you're just going to work as another work day. But God wants to use you to say a kind word, to do a good deed, to bring life to those around you, to calm their storms. Your own business for the king, just like I am. And it's not just because I'm here in Grand Bahama. We're on business for the king every day when we wake up. He wants us to be a vessel that he can use. I want to end with the Bible scripture today. And it's found in Exodus chapter 23. And it's verse 20 through 23. Exodus chapter 23 verses 20 through 23. It says, Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if, you know, Everything is if and then, if you do what you're supposed to do. You know, if you eat healthy, you will help stay alive longer and live a better life. If you don't smoke, you won't pollute your lungs and die. If and then are all part of everything we do. But he said, but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, you know, the angels are just messengers of God. Then I will be an enemy unto your enemies and an adversary unto your adversaries. You know, God does have angels around us to protect us. But there are also evil spirits always trying to trick us up tempting us the lust of the flesh the pride of life and the lust of our eyes that's why it's very careful what you watch with your eyes very 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 carefully you should guard what you see with your eyes because those are the three things the lust of the flesh the pride of life and the lust of our eyes you you should guard those things God has angels around us and the angels are saying, you know what? You should go down this path today. This is the path that is the good path that leads to eternal life. But folks, we all have a choice on which path we're going to go down. And we are all moving. If we're not moving, we are dead. We are all moving. The earth is moving. Everything is moving. If if an animal is laying in the, in, the, in the road and not moving, it's probably dead. So the title of the message today um, about traveling is traveling brings success because we must be moving forward and changing. We must. You cannot do things the way you did it 20 years ago. Everything must be moving and changing and that will bring us success. And as we do this, remember there are spiritual forces of good and evil around us constantly. Which one will you yield yourself to? Not always the easy road. But friends, take the blessed road as you travel and the angel that God sends before you Beware and obey.